This is my new favorite running and hiking water bottle. And guess what? You can't even buy it. Well, not exactly. You can, however, you have to buy three separate components and assemble them yourself. It has taken me months and a lot of wasted parts, a lot of trial and error just to get this one water bottle. However, it was all worth it in the end because I am very satisfied and I love it and I think you guys will too. What's so special about this bottle? Let me show you. This bottle conveniently fits in the chest pocket of many packs. The straw allows me to drink water easily without having to take the bottle out. The bottle is curved and contoured so it fits well in the chest pocket. The bottom of the plastic bottle is flat so it can stand up on its own. If the surface is uneven, you can also place it between your feet when filtering water. Now, if I haven't convinced you yet, let me show you some scenarios where this would come in handy. Here I am wearing the Black Diamond Distance 22 backpack with a 500 milliliter plastic cylindrical water bottle, a cheap one that you would find in any grocery store. Because the straps are so thin, I can feel this plastic water bottle pushing against my chest. Now maybe this bulge doesn't bother you at all or you have a backpack with thicker straps. I still have issues with these plastic cylindrical water bottles. The backpack I'm using here has padded straps, so holding the water bottle is a lot more comfortable. However, going for a drink requires usually two hands, one to unscrew the cap and one to hold the bottle. Now imagine if this selfie stick was actually a trekking pole. I would have to put down at least one trekking pole to take this bottle out. Most people would put down both trekking poles. That way they can securely unscrew the bottle cap without accidentally dropping it. Some bottles have flip caps or also known as sport caps. Being able to flip the cap open with one hand is a lot easier than having to unscrew it. However, this is still not ideal for those who use trekking poles. For those of you who don't use trekking poles, there are still issues I have with this water bottle. Let's say I was to go on a run with a water bottle with a sports cap and I want to take a drink, I can flip open the cap easily. However, in order to drink water, I would need to tilt my head and raise the bottle up to let gravity let the water flow through. When hiking on smooth terrain, this isn't an issue. However, if I'm running on rough terrain, I really want all of my focus to be on the trail. Soft flasks and water bladders solve all of these issues. You can suck in water without having to take anything out or tilting your head in any major way. But these are still not my preferred carry method because filtering the water becomes a huge pain in the there's no rigidity in a soft flask or hydration bladder, you have to hold it in one hand when filtering water. It's very difficult to get decent flow rate while squeezing the water filter with one hand. You can hold it between your legs which frees up your hands, however that can get kind of messy. I also just don't like using soft flask or hydration bladders. Hopefully now you can understand why I'm so excited about showing you guys this bottle and why I spent so much time, like months, trying to find these specific pieces to assemble them together. The only other bottle that I know of that's similar to this on the market is the Raid Light Argo water bottle. Now this is a great water bottle, however, you can tell there is a huge width difference. This is a very chunky, chunky bottle. Oh, he come. And it can only fit in a limited amount of uh, uh, shoulder strap pockets for packs. This one is a lot more versatile and it can fit in most shoulder strap pockets. All right, enough talking. Let me show you how to make this bad boy. Here are all the items you will need. I'll have the links in the description below. A pair of scissors, belt bottle, hydration tube, and a straw. This straw is actually optional, so I'm gonna put it to the side for now. The first step is to unscrew the cap on the bottle. You can discard it, throw it away, use it for something else. We won't be needing it for this project. There's a smaller tube on the inside of the hydration tube. You can take that out and discard it. Unscrew this bottom blue portion and discard it. 
The last piece to discard is this small rubber piece. You can simply pull that off. The blue portion of the hydration tube is now the new lid of the belt bottle. You should be able to screw it on. All right, almost done now. Next step would be to remove this clear tube from the blue portion. Then take the tube and measure and cut a piece that's the size of the bottle. With the cut piece of tubing, you want to insert it onto the hole that's facing the bottom of the bottle, not the top. That's the same hole where we took that small rubber piece off. The reason why we're doing this is because the original straw they give you is much thinner than the new one. This makes the flow rate a lot faster. Once in place and screwed on, the new straw that you cut should reach the bottom of the bottle. If it doesn't, you can always cut yourself another piece. You will have extra in this project. The last step would be to cut the mouthpiece portion of the straw. You can use the original mouthpiece that comes with the hydration tube and cut it to the length that you prefer. However, I did not like the mouthpiece on the original hydration tube and how the tube curved, so I bought a separate straw to attach. This straw has a slightly angled mouthpiece, and also the tube is much more straight. It fits on with no problem, you just have to cut it to the length that you desire. Now that we've gone over the pros of this bottle and how to make it, let's talk about some of the cons. My first con with this bottle is that the air intake valve is not of the best quality. It actually leaks water if the bottle is very full and if you squeeze it hard. Of course, if you put it upside down and squeeze it, it will leak even more water. In real world use, when the bottle is in the chest strap pocket of your backpack, it isn't squeezed hard enough to leak a significant amount. That last shake, I did get one or two droplets. However, that was the hardest shake I've done and the bottle is full. Leakage is even more unlikely with a less full bottle. The biggest con with this bottle is the weight. It comes in at 81 grams while carrying only 300 milliliters of water. That's roughly 3.7 milliliters per gram. That's not great compared to a Solomon salt flask, which weighs 38 grams while carrying 500 milliliters, which is 13 milliliters per gram. A Kirkland Signature bottle weighs only nine grams, but holds 500 milliliters, which is 55.55 milliliters per gram. The Raid Light Argo bottle weighs 88 grams. It's stated as 600 milliliters, but I found that it can hold upwards to 700. This means it has eight milliliters per gram. Lastly, I don't have one here, but a 500 milliliter smart bottle weighs only 27 grams. That gives you 18.51 milliliters per gram. Have I convinced you yet? If not, that's totally fine. <laughs> I admit that this bottle is not for everyone. In fact, I think the majority of people will actually find this either overkill or just not necessary. However, hopefully some of you in the same position as I am, who's doing a lot of fast packing, will see the benefit of this bottle and how game changing it is really. And so if you do, you know, please share this video, please like, please subscribe, yada, yada, yada. And honestly, even if you don't find this bottle necessary, but you appreciate the work I've put into making this thing, cause I keep saying it, it really did take months. Like these components, they don't just, like I've had to, there's a lot of trial and error. Let's just say, I'll keep it at that. But if you appreciate the work I did, you know, please show some love. Thank you for watching, happy trails.